Okay, um, can you just state your name and your job role away in the Sea Life Centre? My name's Fiona Smith and I'm the head of the Animal Care Department. Can you tell us a bit about the turtles, like their species and everything? These well. are uh, marine green sea turtles, which is one of the seven species of marine turtles you get in the world. Um, they're one of the largest species as well, um, and they can live up to sort of around about 100 years old. What actually happened to them so they end up here? These five turtles we have were rescued out in America and were taken into the Florida hospital. Um, and this is a hospital facility that's been put together specifically for marine turtles, not just green turtles but um, other species as well. And, and they'll get taken in there and rehabilitated with the idea of eventually being released back into the wild. Unfortunately for our five, due to the nature of their injuries, they are not able to go back into the wild. So they're going to have to remain in captivity for the rest of their lives. Uh, what happened to our, our five is that they've all been damaged by a boat, whether it's been they've swam into the boat um, or an impeller hit them, um, that kind of damage, and it's damaged their carapace, which is their back shell. Um, the injuries that they have uh, now mean that they can't um, regulate their buoyancy, so they can't dive down in the normal way a turtle would, and um, they do just tend to ball up to the surface and float along the surface. Yeah. Where did they come from originally? These are the... the Marine turtles, particularly the greens, they'll be in uh, regions of the um, Indo-Pacific and also the Atlantic as well. And these are off the, the coast of America on the, uh, the Atlantic side. Okay. Why did they come to this Sea Life Centre out of all the ones we have all over the country? We've had links with the, hosp the turtle hospital for, uh, for a while anyway. Um, and because this is the National Turtle Sanctuary, it was an ideal place for them to come. We have the facilities to hold them, we've got a large enough tank, we've got a lot of quarantine space so we can look after them if we need to take them out of the tank to readjust their weights that they have to help them swim properly. Um, so we've got a lot of experience here to look after them. How did you get the public involved with them? Um, well, on these sort of transports with turtles, when they're um, being transported, whether it's by uh, car, van or aeroplane, we need to look after them in a particular way and temperature is one of the main things that can cause a problem if we have a high temperature or low temperature. So we um, asked the, the local public to donate towels for us because we can use that to help uh, sort of pad up an area to keep it warm, we can use them to clean the turtles afterwards when they arrive because we need to give them a bit of a bath before they go into the tank which might sound silly but that's what we need to do and also just to cushion them as well because they're, they're naturally in the water that helps to um, sort of hold their body weight. So when we put them on the ground or on a level surface, we need to pad that um, area so they're not, not sort of lying on the hard surface themselves. Okay. Can you tell us a bit about the journey that they made to get to Weymouth? Um, yes, they were um, actually, some of, our tur some of the five have actually been in the Florida hospital for us up to, up to 10 years. So quite accustomed to sort of a swimming pool almost environment. Um, so uh, a bit of a surprise for them, they were packed into a crate. Uh, we cover their bodies in petroleum jelly and that stops their skin and their shell drying out. Um, and then they're packed into a box, put, put on an aeroplane and flown across to Heathrow. Once they arrived there they had to go through the customs, get cleared um, and then on the back of a van and came down to Lima. Okay.